Uh, next uh, on the hit parade, if you will, uh, Area Agency on Aging, uh, 1B Annual Implementation Plan. We have Jim McGuire with us this uh, afternoon, Interim CEO. Good afternoon, Jim. Good afternoon, and I'm here with uh, Sandra Hahn, who's also a member of the area, your representative, representing older adults in Macomb County on the Area Agency on Aging Board as well. I'd like to make a few comments, speak to the resolution, the next thing on the agenda in terms of uh, county approval of the area annual implementation plan for 2018. Right. The uh, air agency is, all area agencies in the state are mandated to produce a plan to show how we allocate the state and federal dollars and what services are allocated for, and also to, once that it's approved by the agency, submit them out to county boards and commissioners for your review and input and approval as well. So that's the process for where we're at. A few comments about uh, the senior population and what this plan is intended to address. It's about a $23 million plan uh, of mm -hmm. state and federal funds. It represents almost 50% of the Area Agency on Aging's program budget. Uh, and together, we serve uh, through our information and access for counseling about 17, about 18,000 seniors, and then for the hardcore services or the community services and in-home services, another 18,000 residents are served. To Commissioner Brown's point, that is a duplicated count. We don't have the capacity because there are different systems to, so, to come up with an, an absolute unduplicated count. But my guess is we probably start reach about between 12 and 14 percent of the county's senior population, and we define the senior population as age 60 and over. Um, most of the services are provided through our subcontractors. For example, the Meals on Wheels program, our l largest program, is subcontracted to the county. They served about 400,000 Meals on Wheels uh, in this past year. One of our most important programs is the My Choice Medicaid waiver, where we use Medicaid nursing home dollars to serve um, people who qualify for Medicaid and qualify for nursing home level of care, but to serve them in their homes and not have to force them to go to a nursing home. As uh, Kevin mentioned earlier, these got some competition. We're proud to say we're part of that competition. And when people can work uh, with assistance at home, we try to provide them that option whenever possible. And we served 240 uh, Macomb County residents who could be in nursing homes, but we're helping them stay at home. And that program is beneficial for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is because uh, it's a cost savings. We do it at much less cost than we would have to reimburse the nursing homes. And those 240 people that we served uh, in recent years actually saved the state about $7.7 .7 million. So it's a very good value. Um, in, in Macomb County, according to SEMCOG's population projections, just over, in fact, this year, just uh, some, uh, the county went over 200,000 seniors, age, residents age 60 mm -hmm. and older. The uh, thing you've got to remember is there are more seniors in Macomb County than there are school-aged children. In fact, there's about 40 percent more seniors than school-aged children, and that division will uh, continue to grow. Those of the, I see some of the older ones smiling. <laughs> well, it's not you carried away the children here. not believing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, well, and then the other factor is, people turning 60. SEMCOG projects that about 5,900 59-year-olds Macomb County residents will turn 60 this year. That's a rate of about 16 new seniors every day in Macomb County, which accounts for that you know, bulge in the baby boom population. And, and a few comments about the plan. The key is it's a maintenance of effort plan. We've got a, uh, a mix of 23 different services that we fund, and We've gone through the uh, process of public hearings and public input, and we're going to keep with that. Actually, we're going to reduce it by one. Uh, we were eliminating one service called vision assistance, which was designed to help newly um, blinded older adults to adjust to that. It's a service we funded, but it's been very little used. In fact, last year, we put just $1,000 in our budget so that if we had somebody that needed it, we could purchase under a, an agreement. Uh, did, did nobody even ask for that uh, assistance last year, so we just removed it from the plan and reallocate those dollars to some of the other community services. Um, aside from that, uh, the other two emphasis on our prevention programs, health prevention programs that help people manage with conditions like diabetes, fall prevention, and so forth. It's got a lot of federal funding targeted to that and some grant funding, so that's an area of emphasis and growth in terms of prevention. Uh, the other thing is we, we're solidifying what has been a demonstration program, what we call our community living program, which is the program where we provide to 
physically feel older adults who have activity of daily living limitations but need that help to stay in their home. Uh, we provide respite for family caregivers. We provide services like housekeeping and personal care, helping with bathing, dressing, meal preparation, and stuff in the home. It was a demonstration program because to run the program, you have to have a care manager work with the family or the individual to do the assessment, set up a care plan, order the services from the vendors that we contract with to provide those services and manage those changes. We moved from a direct care management model to a telephonic care model. We did that because a lot of these folks were receiving between three and ten hours of help a week, are able to manage their workers coming and going and are pretty capable for those that it's the vast majority of individuals. So they don't need that frequent in the home relationship with us. And what it's done, under the old model for care management in the home, we could serve a caseload of about 50 people per care manager. Under the telephonic model, we can serve 150 with one care manager. Mm -hmm. And that allows us to redirect a lot more of the dollars into services. We've been working on it for a few years now. We're happy with it. The quality results are good. And so in our plan, we're solidifying, moving our, from a demonstration to a permanent um, program at the agency. Now, there is one issue I do want to um, bring to your attention with some trepidation, and that is when we look at the service, there's a disparity uh, in terms of what I would consider to be some underserving of Macomb County. So for example, Macomb County has just about 29% of our six county region senior population, yet when I looked at the uh, percentage of the participants in that community living program recently, we only had just over 23% of the participants from Macomb County. So as you can see from that gap, we think that we're underserving in Macomb County. I want to tell you that we intend to address that and correct that grant gap. Um, we've talked with uh, Macomb County Community Action Officials, Macomb Family Services issues to make sure that we're getting, they know how to make appropriate referrals to the program. And we've talked to the state right. uh, officials about options for correcting that. Currently, the program is closed to new enrollments. It has been since mid-May. We closed it because we were spending a little bit ahead of what we projected the utilization would be to carry our caseload, so we're probably closing it for another few months till we get spending in line and then we'll open it up. But when we do open it up, our intention is to open up just to Macomb County residents. Actually, there's some underspending in St. Clair County as well, so the opening okay. may be just for Macomb and St. Clair County residents temporarily. Um, Very good. Don't, don't, t t it's a complicated thing because like Monroe County gives us a lot of money to overserve so they never have a wait list in Monroe County so that the percentages are, haven't factored or backed out some of the figures but in essence there's underserving. It's, I've discovered it when I came on board in this position and we intend to address it. Um, the other thing that I should, should want to make you aware of is um, we actually, we have a Macomb County office. It's in, it's in space that's, uh, what I consider to be substandard in terms of uh, the, the facility, the uh, safety that it provides to our uh, uh, staff, and um, an, an uncooperative landlord who won't do things like fix the toilet permanent, permanently. As we had had some discussions with Steve Gold before he left about space that the county is and securing space at schools or in other county offices, and so we've had some discussions with space. We were. I, I listened to the previous speaker and we have actually looked at that building, but now somebody that, the spot they had for us, um, they, um, somebody else has asked for it. So we'll get, obviously be, be the end of the line and we're in no crises, but we do have conversations going on with your department sta staff about if there's an opportunity that makes sense financially and so forth, it might be an opportunity for us to relocate our office and have a better working environment for the staff that we have in the county. Very good. Uh, and I would like to invite Sandy Kahn to make a comment. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Uh, like I say, I'm the older adult representative. I've been doing this since I retired from the county. I worked for the county for almost 20 years, and I was supervisor of the resource advocates. So that experience um, from that side, receiving the money from Area Agency on Aging, the experience I got with the county and also with my uh, counseling license has uh, really helped me to work on the board and work with Area Agency on Aging. Thank right. you. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Uh, let's start at the, uh, do we have a motion to receive and file? We have a motion by Romano, support by Sauger. Uh, Commissioner Drolette. Questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, and thanks both of you for being here today. 
Um, you had mentioned that Monroe County does uh, some sort of overpaying in order to make sure they don't have a wait list. Do we have a wait list in Macomb County for these services? Um, yes, for the community living program. I'm sorry I don't have the, don't quote me on the number, but I think it's in the 400 person range for the yeah. in-home services. So do you know if we had the resources to uh, assist those folks, would that bring us up to the level equivalent of our, uh, the percent of our population that's being served or, you know, would we be not underserved at that point? Um, I'd have to look at the numbers. It's, the, the wait list is complicated because there are people, we don't prevent anybody from going on the wait list. So there are some people who can certainly afford to pay for services themselves and probably should. Because we have a wait list, we have actually five levels of need on that. Someone who has, we, so I don't want to get into, I don't think you want me to get into the definition, but we rate people on need, so higher income, have a lower level of need, lowest income would receive a priority as an example, and there are five mm -hmm. criteria like that. Um, so there's, it's a complicated system that we have because of demand and we try to serve the most needy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I guess I'm trying to uh, understand if, if, we're under, if we're underserved in the sense that we have people waiting who can't get services, who need the services and would qualify for the services, or if our county is underserved because fewer seniors have as many needs, that we may have a more robust support structure within other elements of the community or something like that, where there's just not as many people applying or who feel like they need some well, of those services. We, it's not that they're not applying. We do have a reasonable percentage of Macomb County residents on the wait list. And I think maybe the answer to the earlier question is, we think close to 50 people, if we took added 50 Macomb County residents, that would get us pretty close to what should be equitable in terms of a distribution. I see. Um, and, and in some of, the, some of the counties, like in Livingston County, they give us additional general funds to overserve their county. Monroe County, they have a countywide senior citizen millage, and they give us enough money, about 300,000, so that there's never a wait list in, in Monroe County. So those are some of the variances of that program. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, looking under your highlights section of the report, and you did discuss it in your uh, presentation, um, the Community Living Program Supports Coordination. Now, you have to apply for that, right? Is, is that, according to the report, it says here you're going to request approval for a new regional service definition titled CLP. Yes. The, the yes. telephonic because, thing. Because, yeah, we had a definition that was a temporary pilot demonstration. Our, everything that we do has to get approved by the State Office on Aging. So in our plan, we propose moving that from a demonstration to a permanent service definition. Do you anticipate any obstacles with that in getting the approval? Actually, uh, yes and no. Um, we asked the state, they had some questions about that and because it's a real different model and they actually told us take it out of our plan for this year because they wanna pull together a statewide work group and look at a lot of other issues related to this model and some other models that other AAAs are doing around the state. It's kinda like we've all evolved and got a little more sophisticated. The original state service definition has never been updated to keep pace. So they said, we don't, don't put it in your plan, let's come up with a good state service definition that meets yours and others' needs, and then we'll move forward with it. And I'm sorry they did this after, they, they told us this after we'd already submitted it to you. Okay. But I okay. don't anticipate a problem because we're all working on the same page, and okay. they, they really appreciate the efficiency of this model. Yeah, I was going to say, in your presentation, you said, you know, one worker can work on 150 cases as opposed to, you know, 50, I think, or whatever. So despite whatever the state is redefining it to be, you anticipate that that program, that model, whatever it may be, will be in effect next year. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay. We'll, we're an advocacy organization, so if anything hurts that, we will maybe ask you to help us speak out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Seeing as hearing none, uh, we have a motion of support to receive and file. Please vote. Jim, Sandy, thank you very much for coming. Good presentation. Uh, next, we have a resolution area.